Thanks so much for joining us um, today and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing your session. Um, for everybody else, Paul's going to be talking about um, the use of pebble pad in a new curriculum in the medical school. Um, so I, I think without any further ado, I'll just hand over to you, Paul, because you'll be able to explain it all far better than I can. So welcome. Thanks very much, Alison. Um, hello, everyone. Good to speak to you today. Um, just to pick up on Alison's point about uh, the different time differences, it, it is rather grim in the in the north of England here, so it feels like it is night time, as, as John was saying on the chat. Um, I've been asked to speak to you today about, as Alison said, the lessons on recording student completion of competencies. And the way that that relates um, to myself and, and my role here in Liverpool is the introduction of PebblePad into medicine, uh, which is largely a competency-based discipline. So what I hope to do in this presentation is just to briefly take you through um, the different stages of the projects that we've gone through in the past. It's about, it's about 18 months or so now uh, where the project's really been taking place and it's, it's um, a development project still with plenty of time um, to go. But what I hope to do is just take you briefly through the background to the project. Um, make you aware of some of the limitations that we uh, faced and are still facing, which may be relevant to uh, a lot, lot of you listening today. Um, and also look at the current situation, uh, how we developed things up until now, and then um, also set out some of our future goals and aspirations, which uh, we're halfway uh, towards in some cases. Um, so hopefully if, if we get through that uh, in enough time, then I've also got a little bit of space to show you a live demo if, if that works with this sharing screen option um, and also to answer any any questions so if that's okay I'll just I'll get started so a bit of the background um, my post the official title of it um, is director of technology enhanced learning within the School of Medicine um, and it's basically one of a, a range of posts that have been created within uh, my faculty, which is the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences, um, there's basically a post like mine within each of the undergraduate schools. So dentistry, psychology, health sciences, veterinary science, and, and medicine. Um, there's basically an academic lead for the use of technology in each school. And my job is within medicine, solely looking at uh, medicine and improving the use of technology for medical students largely around learning and teaching activities and student support, but sometimes it does cross over the boundary into things like administration um, and other areas as well. So that's the, the role that uh, I've got. I started in June 2013. Um, and as I came into the medical school, they were, the school were already uh, committed to implementing a new curriculum in September the following year. So that was the context I was coming into. A lot of change, a lot of development, a lot of um, new curriculum content that was yet to be decided. And they had already decided in the school, really, before I arrived, that uh, an e-portfolio was, was to play a central part in the new curriculum, allowing us to um, record student competencies and track them uh, remotely. That was one of the key parts of it. Uh, another piece of background which is relevant is a growing movement within the National Health Service, the NHS, um, and a growing commitment from the General Medical Council, the GMC, um, to bring in technology and to, um, even uh, in the NHS, the postgraduate medical students during the foundation years, they have a, an e-portfolio system already. And we really saw uh, an undergraduate use of an e-portfolio making that transition easier for students and getting used to um, the reflective practice that we wanted them to to um, demonstrate before they went into the postgraduate arena. So we really saw that as a, as a key part of it. Um, in previous roles I've had uh, earlier in my career, I was aware of a lot of the e-portfolio options on the market. Lots were around, some stayed, some went, some developed. Um, so I was aware of general e-portfolio options, open source options, things like Mahara, um, Blackboard's e-portfolio tool or WebCT before that, 
and there was some doubt about how that was going to develop other specific tools. Um, we had tools within the university already, uh, rather bespoke to certain disciplines. Um, and the foundation ePortfolio that I've mentioned was also an option. Um, but through a process of considering the options we had and the time and the money available, other things uh, that are taken into consideration. Um, PebblePad was a tool that came to the foreground and I saw it as one of the the best, most flexible tools to um, be able to control myself to um, implement an ePortfolio option within the medical curriculum. So lots of options but PebblePad came to the fore as um, we limited it down for various reasons. Um, so the school, the NHS and the students required different things out of the system, the ePortfolio system. Um, the school largely we wanted to remotely monitor what the students were doing. Previously they had a paper logbook which they um, recorded the experiences and clinical competencies in. Um, we couldn't record what they were doing without calling those logbooks physically in so that was a big limitation. We wanted a system that we could uh, check what the students were doing, not for punitive reasons, um, but for formative feedback and to um, intervene in a positive sense if they were falling way behind. Often with the paper logbook model it was way too late when we found that out when they were called in. NHS trusts as well, we need to monitor to some extent that the consistency, uh, the quality assurance processes, um, making sure that students, medical students get a consistent experience at various different hospitals and trusts. We wanted to uh, get that from the system and of course the students need to show that they are competent in a range of clinical skills and activities and experiences. So different things from different um, audiences. So just to briefly mention the limitations, um, at the top the um, money unfortunately um, is a limiting factor if you don't have it and uh, we didn't at the beginning unfortunately. Um, we had um, very little dedicated technical support and very little time to actually turn around implementing an ePortfolio in time with the new curriculum um, coming in less than a year. So it was a, a really um, tight uh, situation that we had to work with. Um, because of the lack of money, the use of mobile devices and, and the strategy for those uh, devices came uh, up as, as a limitation. Basically we didn't have enough money to buy devices for uh, one device for every student which initially we were looking at. So we had to explore the bring your own device um, initiative or um, movements that started in business and has come into education. Sometimes through necessity, sometimes it's an actual choice. Um, I do know other medical schools have gone down the line of uh, distributing a device per student. Uh, interestingly, some of those places that have gone down that line are actually scaling back from that and actually going down this line of asking the students to use their own devices. Um, I think there's pros and cons to both sides, um, but at this point we had to go with the students' own devices. We did some research um, around what the students had. About 95% uh, uh, sorry, 99% of students had mobile phones of some kind. About 90%, 85% had smartphones, which would be applicable to the situation. And a huge uh, majority of those had either an Android or an Apple phone. Um, a, hu a few had Windows phones, Blackberries, other things. But the vast majority, if we could find something that would work on Android and Apple phones, we would cater for the majority. Uh, and we'd have to have some of the devices, uh, maybe on a loan basis, for students who didn't have that. Um, just moving on to the other limitations, one thing that very early on we had to uh, settle on was the model of having a paper logbook and a signature in some form. That was one of those non-negotiable things that we discussed about verifying uh, competency and students' clinical activity. Um, the, the signature model was seen as something that we, we had to replicate in some form, which is very difficult technically. Um, potentially to, to, to deliver. Um, the other model which is relevant to say is the students, our medical students, um, we have 
you know, 300 per year, so 1,500 in all. And those students are distributed amongst uh, a vast range of clinical environments, and they may never see a clinician who signs them off again. So a model of using a system to get maybe an email ticket sign off or some other verification through logging into a system um, would break down for us because the clinicians didn't have any real relationship with an individual student beyond seeing them practice a certain skill and signing them off in that context. They may never see them again and that was something we had to bear in mind. That model was going to stay with the new technology. Um, another very um, limiting factor was the NHS internet access that students could use. Some hospitals had it, some didn't and there was a there were a vast range of um, variables and lack of control when it came to that. So very early on I realized that using the internet with something like PebblePad in a clinical environment was not going to be an option for at least the signing off of activities. So we had to come up with a another option to deliver that. Um, and the last two points there, just be aware that we had a new curriculum coming in and that was phased in. So this last year we had year one and year three on the new curriculum and year two, four and five on the old curriculum, which in terms of coming up with a system that would cater for both was an added complication. Um, so that's another factor we had to consider. So with all that in mind, um, we entered a development phase and um, largely on, on my own, um, didn't have any technical support so there was a huge amount of activity and I was rather under the gun to get things developed in time so I had to make a lot of um, decisions in a quick space of time about the way things were going and really the point halfway down there, erring on keeping it simple really. The, the first point online templates and the workbooks we originally created in PebblePad, when the internet access was not guaranteed we really had to scrap all that early development so it was several months of work at that point we had to completely scrap and start again um, because we didn't have an option to get a signature against a competency um, offline. So what I came up with at the time, um, people may know of other options, again through lack of um, technical support there wasn't much uh, time to, do, to explore this fully but Adobe Reader was um, something that I used um, Basically, we created interactive PDF documents and asked the students to download the Adobe Reader app, um, which is free of charge, available on Android and, and Apple um, devices. And then the students would download the forms, use them on their mobile device, and through the annotation feature within the Adobe Reader app, actually get a signature in real time with a clinician using their finger on the device um, and fill in other interactive fields as well. And therefore, at the end of each clinical activity, they would have a signed off completed form that then they could uh, upload into the ePortfolio system, into PebblePad, uh, against a workbook, against a competency, um, a capability it was on the page in the workbook. So that was the model. Um, that's what we asked them to use. It wasn't perfect by any means. It's third party software. We had no control of it. It's recently been updated, which has caused massive chaos this year. So it wasn't ideal, but it was one of the only ways I could, uh, for free, get a signature added to a document. Um, so we went down that line. Uh, the, work, the workbook side of things, again, trying to keep it simple, trying to map the structure of the workbook to the student's activity. Uh, and again, I'll show you that in a bit if I've got time, but that's developed throughout the year. Um, we wanted staff within the trust on the clinical side and within the school here on the academic side to use Atlas to monitor student activity and actually give them feedback um, on their clinical um, experience and, and competency. Um, and the way we delivered it was through Blackboard. Um, we have a building block, a plug-in to Blackboard, uh, a PebblePad building block, and that allows us to uh, automate the enrollments through our student record system and the uh, DLE, Blackboard, um, and create workspaces in Atlas then to control membership to workbooks uh, and that's worked really well that's just using technical systems down the years it's one of the most positive experiences I've had integrating two things together and it working um, almost perfectly on the enrollment side after the initial setup so I've been really pleased with that 
Shibboleth is the authentication that we use. Uh, right, so the current situation, um, we've got some feedback about the use of it this year. I'll, I'll sum it up in, in um, two ways. Largely the staff have loved it and the students haven't. I think it's fair to say that that's a, a good summary. And almost all the student feedback, negative feedback, is related to the use of the Adobe Reader forms and the complicated process to get them from the app into uh, PebblePad, exporting them out and uploading them. It's almost all to do with that side. It's not actually the workbooks and PebblePad that they have found difficult. It's everything else beyond that, which we're hoping to um, make a big change on this year, which I'll come to at the end. Uh, the staff have really liked the fact that they can look at students uh, remotely and at the uh, progress um, and that's been a big advance this year so largely the staff and in the trusts and staff in the school have really liked it and the students haven't liked the complicated process um, even though they've been fairly comfortable using PebblePod itself um, so I said at the beginning that I was on my own largely for, for the early period of this. Um, as of January, we have a, a support post now in place, which anyone getting involved in these situations, I would urge you to have that type of support, admin support in place, um, which is really required when you're supporting as many students as we are, uh, 1,500 students. It was um, a difficult year, let's year, let's put it that way for me, supporting all those students on my own with this new activity. Um, we're concentrating almost solely at the moment on clinical placement use of the of the technology. Um, this basically means that any of the activity that needs to get signed off would come through the ePortfolio. Uh, next year, we're moving to on uh, we're moving towards using PebblePad for a range of different activities, some online and some offline. Uh, but we concentrated on the clinical placement use initially. Uh, years one to four are currently using it. Year two, three, four have clinical placements. Uh, year five will come next year. Um, and because there's no central support being decided on PebblePad yet within the university, uh, to a large extent I'm playing a, a central role trying to uh, support the use of it in different areas as well as much as I can, even though I have to concentrate just on medicine, really. Uh, I want to foster use of it within the university, so I am supporting other disciplines and the use of it a little bit. So just to finish then, the, um, the future, uh, what we want to aim for, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we want students, medical students to be reflective practitioners and we want the ePortfolio to introduce them to that idea of reflective practice and recording their activities, reflecting on it, learning and growing and recognising that themselves. And we want that across year one to year five and potentially students to use that uh, beyond their time at Liverpool, which is an option within PebblePad. Um, so that's the overall aspiration. Um, this year we're going to explore much more of the functionality um, because we have more time to develop new resources this year. Um, we need to support staff and students more effectively than we did last year with the extra support post I think we can. Lots of training needs to happen, lots of guidance needs to be produced. Um, we want to use the system to monitor, as I said before, the NHS activity to make sure that they're delivering what we need from our medical students. Um, we're using it increasingly to enhance the administrative processes in, in the school, the circulation of documents that needed to be signed by the students, regulatory um, documents. A lot of those rather dull things actually can be taken care of uh, within the ePortfolio and you know who's um, submitted them, who hasn't, and you can keep track of them that way. That's been a big advance. Um, we want to incorporate either Flourish or part of the system to uh, support the academic advisor um, activity within the school and we're halfway through developing that. Um, we want to force all assessments, all summative and maybe formative assessments through the portfolio system through PebblePad. Um, we want to use it to uh, come up with a progression review each year, who can sit the exam and who can't, based on certain competencies being reached. Um, I think the reporting mechanisms within Atlas need to improve in order for us to do that more effectively, uh, but hopefully if we get that, we can uh, use it for that as well. Um, PebblePad is also going to be used within the university uh, on a wider basis for the HERE, the Higher Education 
Achievement Report, I think that stands for. That's basically accrediting extracurricular activity um, in, in students' records. So there's developments around the university for that. And one last thing to mention, which is a key point, particularly related to anyone who um, comes from a healthcare background um, or a vocational course that has a placement that need to be signed off in some sense. Um, what we've been working with Pebblepad on in the last few months is to create some customized offline forms which will allow our students to record their clinical experiences and get a signature um, using the Pebble Pocket app. Um, and we're hoping that that will go live in September, start a new academic year. Therefore, the whole Adobe Reader side of things, which was a large part of the student dissatisfaction, can be moved to one side and the offline content that synchronizes automatically as an asset within uh, Pebblepad for the students um, will take over from that and we're hoping that's a big advance this year. Okay, so that's the presentation. Um, have I got time to demo any live systems, Alison? Um, it depends a little whether there are any questions people want to ask. Um, we've only got about five minutes till we really need to hand over to Wendy. Could you do something quickly in five minutes, do you think? Yes, I can, I can show something very quickly, that's fine. I think it's nice for people to be able to see some of the stuff that you're actually talking about. Um, I'm sure people would like to see that. It's always you know, a really informative part. So if you could do that, that'd be great. Just, I'll just whiz through it now then. Okay, so this is, um, if you can see this, this is the um, Blackboard environment that we have. This is how we've um, channeled the students through to the um, ePortfolio system. So we've basically set up a course within the VLE just for the ePortfolio. This will be expanded to all assessment next year. Um, and basically they've got um, an explanation on why, we've do why we're doing this on the homepage. The forms that they needed to uh, download were on there as well. Um, any help and support, documentation and videos that we produce for them, virtual tours of the environments, things like that are on there. Um, and also the actual link to the ePortfolio system. So when they click on um, that link there, it opens in a new window. I think it comes up, here we go, open a new window. And this is the student's view, which I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. Um, so what we've done, this is a fake student account that I'm in at the moment, just to reassure you it's not live student content that we're uh, the showing. So just to show you very quickly, um, one of the workbooks that we've designed, we've done it by year, and we've broke, broke down the activities that the students need to go through during the year, some minimum levels of, of different clinical activity. And so the workbook is based around the forms that the students fill in, um, and then on the page itself, they have a capability added and this is where they upload the completed form that they fill in. Um, so depending on what they've done, they title it accordingly and upload it, which we can then remotely view. So if I just show you the Atlas side of that, um, I'll just search for that student again there. Okay, so this is again a fake account. Um, so this is the workbook, the, the staff side of it through Atlas that you see. Um, and the students then have completed various activities. Um, the clinicians are asked to give feedback as well within the trusts, the different teams that look after our students to let them know how they're progressing. So the feedback would be added here as well. Um, and of course, they can look at any individual file that's completed. So just to show you very quickly then the, the types of forms that we ask the students to fill in. These were the forms that we originally designed, and these are the types of forms that we're now redesigning within the offline uh, customized forms approach that we're going to uh, deliver next year. So this is a DOPS form, Direct Observation of Procedural Skills, and obviously they've got various different options to pick, or they can type in. They could do this on their devices. Uh, the assessor then marks them as competent or you know, borderline or above and below the expectations for that year which was set out um, and then they hopefully give them some feedback and sign using the annotation feature on the device and then give their name as well. 
So these are the types of forms that we um, distributed last year, and we're hoping to replicate that within the uh, Pebble Pocket app this year. And uh, hopefully that's going to be a massive improvement um, for students particularly. So I appreciate we're, we're running out of time, so sorry I whizzed through the demo at the end. Um, have we got time for any questions, Alison? Oh, I think we might have time for it. There's one question that's come up. Firstly, can I say um, thank you very much for an excellent presentation. It's really good to hear all the steps in the process that you've gone through to get to where you are now. And I, I noticed in the chat there was particular interest in the whole use of um, PDFs um, and very interesting to hear your findings around that. Um, and also just the mention of Pebble Pocket too has stimulated a lot of conversation. Uh, but there's one question from Anita from USC. She asks um, if you plan to run training for NHS staff in the use of Pebble for themselves, so to track their own CPD and things like that. She's wondering if it might help create acceptance if the clinicians are aware of it and using it in practice as role models. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I think that's a very good point. Um, I completely agree with the fact that um, using it yourself means you're much more likely to be an advocate of it on behalf of students. Um, I would be very much in favour of that, but I'm not sure um, our licence covers that use. Um, that might be a point for uh, someone within Pebble Park. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's, there isn't, you would be using your actual, um, you know, full accounts if you were to provide accounts to your externals, which you, you can do, you know, it's really how you use your accounts is um, very much up to you um, as long as you know it's the primary purpose of education I suppose so it's certainly within the the you know your license use to be able to do that right I mean what we have done is um, I've gone out personally to every hospital that has um, needed to use this system and, and given the staff training in the use of the system from a staff point of view that covers the use of it to monitor our students rather than their own personal use of it but I can very much see that there could be an extension of that in the in the coming year Mm, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's always, you know, we certainly talk about a lot in relation to university staff as well, that if they are engaging with PebblePad personally, they're much more able to sell it to students and, you know, engage them in the process as well, just because of that personal understanding of the system. Absolutely. Um, but just one other quick question, Ellen from Edinburgh asks if it would be possible to share copies of any of your workbooks. So that's just something, food for thought, that you might want to um, think about if that's possible and how um, for, for later. Yeah, I'd be very happy to do that. I mean, one thing that I didn't get a chance to um, discuss, basically the redesign of the workbooks um, for next year will produce a totally new range for every year. Um, so once we've got to the point where we've decided on that definite structure, which we're, you know, 80 to 90 percent uh, decided on, I'm very happy to share that with with everyone. The, the basic concept is to map the structure of the workbooks to the types of forms the students fill in on the different rotations they do on clinical placements. Um, so, for instance, mm. a, a DOPS form, as I've just demonstrated, there would be a generic activity that they could do on any clinical placement potentially. Um, but then there might be specific activities to do with maybe an OBS and gynae placements that needs to be recorded in a separate area within the workbook. So we want to map it to a structure that the students automatically understand because they're going through that, that process in the year. Um, so once we've done that, I'm happy to share that with everyone, yeah. Fabulous. It's always wonderful to be able to see um, real examples and there's always something to be learned, I think, from everybody's examples. So the more we can share our resources, um, the better it is for everyone, I think. Um, oh, hi, everyone. OK, this is, this is John from Pebblepad. Um, just while we're getting Wendy set up, I just wondered uh, whether we could have just a, a little chat around Paul's presentation. Um, clearly, it sparked some interest. Uh, regarding his use of his forms and his workbooks and the reporting side of things, the offline use. Um, has anybody else tried anything similar at the, at the moment? Is, and is there anything that people have really seen that um, they would like to try maybe in the next academic year?
Okay, hopefully the, the typing is lots of questions. I can ramble on against any of these topics as well. If <laughs> somebody wants to just uh, give us a prompt. Um, okay, so we've got so, so Ron, dentistry and oral health is trying to implement assisted competences real time. That's fantastic. Um, and Ellen, I uh, want to try letting students log competencies. Okay, very good. Okay, those are really good. Two really good examples. Um, if I would you have a microphone and did want to just have a little two minute explanation of, of things, um, do um, do let me know. Uh, Ron, you have a, a small pilot. Okay. Um, so Ron, would you like to say a few words if you've got a microphone? We can uh, enable your mic. Hi, Bon. Um, yeah, I know all about these, these workbooks in pharmacy very well, don't I? And um, it has been quite challenging. And again, this one is, is, is mapping against a lots of competencies and using quite a sophisticated setup in, in a workbook and um, using some work that, uh, well, some assistance from Malgo. I'm not sure if Malgo is here today, but um, um, really, really clever stuff that they're doing at Nottingham at the moment. Okay, and David saying as well, um, piloting use of workbooks in radiotherapy clinical placements. That's really good. Okay, and have people sort of um, started using the, the mobile app yet? Pebble Pocket. And as uh, what David's, uh, sorry, what Paul has said about the uh, the offline forms, uh, specifically about um, in medicine, would that sort of work for, for yourselves in? in other health disciplines or other education disciplines. Okay, that's an interesting point about the OSCEs there. Um, I did speak to Andy Kirk who who presented in the previous webinars and, and um, at Sheffield Hallam University they're actually using Pebble Pad for OSCEs and he's shared with me a very interesting workbook in which most of the workbook is um, a set of fields and they can have Pebble Pad in front of them admittedly not offline at the moment but they can have Pebble Pad in front of them on tablets and be recording uh, the assessor fields as, as um, students are, are completing the OSCEs in front of them and even using photographs um, taken from tablets as evidence and associating that with, with the, uh, the OSCE stations. Yeah, I'd be very happy to share that material as well you know, with the um, about the OSCEs. Perhaps if you contact me sometime, I can, I can um, uh, perhaps put you in touch with Andy Kirk, and you can um, have a discussion about about how he's exactly doing it. Okay, maybe um, Paul, maybe we could bring you back in and uh, and just have a chat about. Um, some of the extended work that you're doing, some of these future plans. Would that be um, would that be okay for you, Paul? Yeah, John. Uh, happy to uh, answer further questions if you want. Yeah, no problem. We're still we're still sort of manicuring the background, trying to um, uh, get Wendy set up here with her mic. And um, it was working, unfortunately, before we all started, as you know, and uh, unfortunately, it's sort of it's died away whilst uh, while she was speaking. So technology has defeated us at the moment, but I'm sure we'll get her back. Um, so, Paul, um, did you want to say a little bit more, perhaps, about um, exactly how you're going to be using the offline um, 
forms that we're creating, what those particular forms are? Yes. Um, basically, we've settled on uh, five forms. Uh, we had a discussion within the school about the types of activities that we we absolutely had to get a signature against with the model that I described before. And we've got them down to five forms that we think will cover the vast majority of activities. Um, a, a DOPS form, which I showed you before, which is really about certain, certain clinical procedures and skills that the students need to reach a certain competency in. So they're rather prescriptive and, and decided in advance, so we can set a form for those. Um, a more generic clinical uh, form, which we've called a supervised learning event. Um, and it follows the same structure that the postgraduate students do, um, where you can assess if a student's uh, you know, borderline or below or above the expectation for that year in certain types of activities. And it really is a, as general as any clinical activity that can be signed off, that form would be able to capture. The students may have drop-down options, but they could also type in if the drop-down option doesn't cover what they've been doing in that uh, top box to describe the activity. We've also got a very simple attendance record form, which sometimes the students just need to turn up and we need to know they've turned up for certain key activities. So that's a very simple form. Um, we've also got a history taking templates and uh, for year twos, that's the majority of clinical activity we want the year twos to do. So very structured history taking templates and a case record template which allows students at a higher level to complete an entire case record about a patient, obviously with non-identifiable information, um, and capture that and then present it to um, another clinician or one of the GP teachers that teach here uh, in a summary format. Uh, that's part of what we want the students to get better at as the years go on. And we think that form will help them get the background information and then there's going to be a section to summarize that into one or two sentences, and that's what they would then present to uh, a clinician. So that's the range of forms we've settled on at the minute, and we think that will cover the vast majority of clinical activity that needs a signature against. Very good, very good. Um, if anybody would like to sort of shout out if there's any other forms that they would be interested in, um, whilst myself and Paul talk, then uh, please do or, or ask any other questions. But Paul, I imagine that uh, things like the attendance record, they will be captured in what a capability field and, and just a, uh, lots of instances will be stored in there as a, as a full record, would they, of somebody's attendance? Yes, um, we're thinking about designing a workbook um, with attendance in mind for certain uh, clinical experiences. So the, the key attendance that we can decide in advance, we can actually have that section as a page within a, a workbook for each year. Mm. Okay, okay, that's fantastic. I can see as well that we've, we've got some um, some questions around the digital signature, and I wonder if you want to maybe say a few words about um, the validity of the digital signatures that we would have in the in the record. I do know that the development work that we're doing, um, digital signatures will be incorporated, and and I think once they're added, it will lock the record. Um, so that no further changes could be made, and that could then be submitted into the into Pebble Pass. Did you want yeah. to say a little bit more about kind of what your your sort of your um, governance processes around what's required for digital signatures on the on the offline form? Yeah, yeah. It's funny actually. During, during this entire process, it's it's come to light that um, people's um, affection towards a signature as the verifiable. Um, uh, evidence that someone has really seen something. Um, in, in cultural terms, that's seen as the easiest thing to replicate, um, but still be robust enough to count. And I think there's an argument for that. So, you know, people can fake signatures, obviously, when you're doing a signature on a digital device. What we had this year with the Adobe Reader option was that basically people copied that signature and used it on other forms, and students try to cheat with that. They try to cheat with paper as well. I mean, that's something that students may do from time to time. But, mm -hmm. but um, we still think that the signature is the easiest thing that will be culturally acceptable to um, clinicians out in, in the clinical environments. Um, 
one thing that the offline forms do let us do um, is once, as John's saying, the signature is added, which is the final thing you can do on the, the offline form, it then locks the form. If any changes are made, because it is student-owned, I mean, a lot of this is student-owned, that's PebblePad's model, um, if anything's changed after that, the signature disappears. So basically, the form will be invalid if any changes are made to what the assessor has said after the signature is added. Uh, the signature cannot be used as a, an image. It's attached to the form. Um, the, the developers within Pelpad did explain to me how this would happen, but it was on a higher techie level than, than I'm comfortable with. So I can't actually explain it to you, but it's something about vector-based something or other. And basically, it's attached to the form, and it can't be used again on the device, which is a key thing. Um, and as soon as that's in place, with all the other uh, boxes filled in, then that will be seen as an acceptable record. It's not 100% robust, but I'm not sure what is 100% robust apart from a maybe a, a, a fingerprint and a fingerprint database within the NHS that we could access, but I think we're quite a few years away from that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, it's been a long process. We're just trying to ascertain what is acceptable. I think everybody is trying to sort of um, so sort of go through the same lessons. This it seems to be a recurring theme, doesn't it? In education, we all seem to have to sort of uh, try and solve these things ourselves. Um, perhaps once we've got through a few of these stages, and we other people are doing similar things, then we can share some of our experiences of, of getting approval of digital signatures and what is the minimum standard, just to make sure that we've got everything right from our side, but also that you guys don't need to fight battles on your own. Yeah, I mean, if anyone's if anyone's got the uh, online access to PebblePad within this type of en environment, then of course you can have the assessor fields and the assessors logging in with their own account, which is much more robust way to to approach it. But if you and I would imagine a lot of the listeners have that offline problem, um, that that model breaks down instantly. So you have to come up with the best. possible solution and I think culturally I think culturally more than technically the, the signature is seen as still the oh, undeniable oh, proof that somebody in real time has seen something and you know um, given, uh, you the sign off for it um, and until we get around that more than the technical side I think that's going to be a problem Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm just following the uh, the chat thread at the moment, and um, it's been suggested we get something up on the uh, the community site at the very least, and um, and sort of share our good or bad practice around this, and just try and um, narrow down really what is um, acceptable practice for all of us to agree on, both with the technology and our, yeah. our governance processes. That would be that would be very 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 useful indeed. Um, I'm kind of conscious like of time. Which kind of, um... Sorry. Go on, yeah. Sorry, John. Uh, I like the suggestion of a, a generic form um, to be made offline. I mean, a few people are suggesting that. Basically, within the offline form development, if a generic form could capture a core number of things that, that users of Pelpod will want to, to have on it, so description of an event, you know, maybe a date picker, um, maybe an option for a text box, feedback text box, and a signature. You know that would cover a huge amount of generic activities that a lot of people may be interested in. And if PebblePad could develop that for all users via the app, that might be a really good uh, uh, development. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree, and I think um, <laughs> as ever, if we can get some consensus on that, I think uh, that would be terrific. I think it would. Um, you know, now that, as you've found sort of working with us, I think that once we've identified what the, the fields are, um, and once they've been programmed in place, it's, it's, it's not too difficult then to start to clone these forms or establish a, a certain form that, that could be the generic one. And um, I think, you know, once we're through this sort of the new version launch um, that the development team are heavily involved with at the moment through this summer, I think there's, there's scope then for, for these other elements to come through on the mobile side because 
I mean, we fully agree with you guys, but it's, it has to be, um, things have to be made available offline these days. If we can make it simple, brilliant. Um, we don't really want to have hundreds of different forms being published and made available if we, if we can avoid it. Okay, Alison, did you want to step in here and just sort of um, give us a heads up on where we are with Wendy? Yeah, thank you, John. I'm really sorry, everybody, but we just can't get this technical hitch with um, Wendy sorted. We're just not sure what's going on. Wendy uses Adobe regularly with her students and um, we were able to make it work um, without a problem when we ran the test the other day. Um, so the technology has defeated us, I'm afraid. Um, we'll do our best to um, ask Wendy to record her presentation and make it available on the site because she has some wonderful things to share with us. I've seen her presentation and um, I'm really disappointed that we're unable to um, have her present to all of us today. So my apologies to everybody for that. And um, thank you, John, for stepping in and running a bit of a conversation there. And it looks like that was a useful conversation anyway. Um, so hopefully um, you will have got something good out of that part of it. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not really sure. Uh, any further questions or last comments that people would like to um, write in or direct at Paul or Wendy, um, <laughs> who's still there but can't speak to us, unfortunately? Yes, we'll certainly do our best. Um, we've got a, um, a health people have had in health user group that we're running here in at the end of um, June and so I'm hoping that Wendy might be available to present at that and once again we'll record that presentation and we can make that available on the community site for everybody as well so that might be an opportunity um, for us to have Wendy's um, presentation available to everybody as well. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. It's been fantastic having so many of you on board, and um, it's such a shame that um, technology got in the way. But I'm pleased that it was a useful conversation. I'll look forward to reading through the chat because I missed out on most of it um, as we were trying to get Wendy sorted. So, um, yeah, thanks so much for joining in, and I hope that there are ways for us to continue these conversations via the community site and via connections that you make through these um, webinars too. You know, um, please do continue with those connections and share resources and ideas because that's really what it's all about uh, and will make everybody's job uh, much easier and make us all much more productive. So as John's saying, um, another series of webinars coming in, um, in the autumn, well, your autumn, not our autumn, and we'd love to have ideas for um, the themes or, or presenters. So, um, yeah, please send them through to us. And I'd really like to thank Paul again for your presentation and Wendy for being here and, and trying to present. I can imagine how frustrating it must be for you um, to have be struggling with the technology. As frustrating it is for us. So um, thank you very much, everybody. And um, enjoy the rest of your day in the UK and your evening here in Australia. If you're like me, you'll go off and um, have a nice glass of wine now. Thanks very much.